Thank you for joining us for Swivel's Adaptability Initiative webinar series. I am Gerard Dawson, Product Manager at Swivel. And the topic tonight and for this whole series is artificial intelligence, AI. And if there's one thing we could all agree on, it's that AI is moving very fast, right? It seems each week there is a new tool. The technology itself is getting better and better month month after month. And when things are changing fast like this, we, we all need to adapt. And at, at Swivel, that's really what we're here to help you do. We're, we're hosting this series specifically to share ideas uh, from, from leaders like Jason joining us tonight so that you can adapt to AI. And as we'll talk a little bit more about later, we're, we're building our tools like Reflectivity to help you adapt as well. But now I'd like to introduce you to tonight's speaker, Jason Kelsall. Jason is the learning system strategist for St. Vrain Valley Schools. In his role, Jason primarily supports and advocates for St. Vrain Valley Schools strategic goals, and the vision for their learning technology plan. His responsibilities include staying up to date with the latest trends in learning technology, encouraging the adoption of new tech, and creating strategies to assess and measure the effectiveness of these learning tools. Sounds like a pretty cool role overall. Currently, Jason is actively involved in overseeing district-wide PD initiatives focused on, you guessed it, generative AI. So Jason, the floor is yours. Let's see if I can't get this going. All right, good to go? All right, so yeah, thanks Gerard. Um, and my name is Jason Kelsall and I am a learning system strategist at St. Brain Valley Schools. And the best thing I think about my job as being a learning system strategist is I get to work with all of our departments in St. Brain. So I get to work with our Office of Professional Development, our Office of Assessment and Curriculum, and of course, I work here at DTS. So I get the pleasure of working with all of those departments to, to make learning awesome in St. Brain. Um, love to have any interaction with people on either Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, or on LinkedIn. Um, so those are my handles for that, and we'll we'll go on and get started here. Um, so like I said, I get to work here at St. Brain Valley Schools. We are just about 30 miles north of Denver, and we serve over 33,000 students, and we are growing. Um, we have around 60 schools and programs within a 411 square mile, um, including 13 different communities that, that we get to serve. Um, our, we have an amazing and inspiring superintendent, Dr. Haddad, and an awesome deputy superintendent, Dr. Kapushin. Um, and an incredible and very uh, thoughtful uh, Board of Ed. So I definitely want to give them a shout out. Um, St. Vrain, we're always up to something really cool. So that's also another great follow on Twitter is at SVVSD to, to learn more all about what we get to do. And now moving on. So way back in November of 2022, um, we started thinking something happened. OpenAI came out with ChatGPT and, and as district leaders, we we started to think like, how might we start to think about the need for AI literacy? How might we think about AI, AI's potential impact on teaching and learning? So at a district level, we started having leadership conversations around what it is, what, what is AI, how, how might it help? Um, and those conversations led to have a, a need for us to really start to explore this with our educators. What we knew for a fact was it was important for our educators and staff members to feel comfortable with AI and feel empowered with AI. Um, so then we're able to, to help our students navigate these times. And so those were our two big, big things is the need for AI literacy. So again, how to, how to, integ how to integrate it, how we're gonna prepare for the future. And really importantly, um, some of the ethical things around uh, AI literacy, potential impact, personalized learning. How may it, or how might it change a teacher's efficacy? Are they able to get things done quicker? Um, are they able to be optimize their time more so they're able to be with students? And how might it enhance an interactive learning experiences? So those are the two ideas, big ideas that we were thinking about um, for a couple months and into the summer. And then we had an idea. We needed to do a district-wide professional development um, so that our staff and 
is starts to feel more comfortable with with generative AI and AI. So our strategy is built on the idea that educators must first understand AI's potential before teaching students to use it. So what we did is we developed a year long course um, with a couple different parts, and I'll and I'll be able to explain all that here in a couple of minutes. Um, the really important thing I believe with what we did starting way back in the summer was this was in partnership with our Office of Professional Development, District Technology Services, and our Office of Curriculum, Curriculum and Assessment. This wasn't just a technology thing. This wasn't just a PD thing. This wasn't just a curriculum thing. It is interweaved with all of those departments and facets of learning. So I am really, really grateful for all the leadership in those three departments here in St. Vrain and coming together to to develop this really cool thing that I get to talk all about right now. Um, so we spent the summer and probably some of August and maybe a, a little bit early in September developing um, this three-prong approach where we're going to have an asynchronous approach to this professional development. We're going to have an in-person approach to this professional development, and we're going to have a leadership element to this professional development. So I'm going to talk through all of these um, throughout um, and if anybody has any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. Let's see if the tech guy can't figure out the chat. There we go. Um, but some of our exciting stats, and I, and I know I have, I have Courtney on here. Courtney was is a, a big part of what we get to do here. So I appreciate all that Courtney's done to help with all this. But we have over 390 of our staff members engaged in this professional development right now, which is by far our largest, uh, like, um, non-required professional development. And it's going into over 51 buildings and schools. So pop quiz, I said there was how many buildings and schools in St. Brain? 50,000 St. Brain bucks, if you put it in the chat. All right, there you go, 60. So we have almost have all of our buildings and schools on board, which is another really important part of this is to, to build that capacity within our system. So now, there we go. Our asynchronous part, and I'm going to show you the Mingo board here in a second, which we're really proud of, is all housed in Schoology, which is our district standard LMS. Um, we use Schoology for all of our different professional development. It's a nice, consistent way in which we can deliver that. Um, so it, it works for us. We also encourage all of our participants to share all of their learning on either uh, LinkedIn or Twitter or X. You still can't quite get that. Um, and we're still working on using our hashtag. So if you search that hashtag, hashtag you'll see some things, um, but we're still working on getting folks to use that. Very, very important part there of this prof professional development is making this work visible. We want to make, um, we just want our story to be told in, in our communities around the work that we're putting in um, and all the cool things that we're exploring with AI, not just our community, but also our, our PLNs. All right, the bingo board. Here it is. So this is our Exploration AI bingo board. It's a self-directed, gamified learning, asynchronous. I was seeing how many buzzwords I could kind of jam in there. But this is how our, our, our staff members and educators are starting to first interact with generative AI. So as you can see, we have 25 different activities on here. Um, and I created this in, in Keynote, my all-time favorite app, uh, along with uh, ThingLink. But folks then are able to personalize their learning. They're able to, to pick the, the things that they really want to do and check out, as well as um, have some kind of skin in the game. If they got three bingos, they got some credit. If they did a full blackout, they're, they're going to get even more credit. Um, and we also have tons of prizes. Another thing to note here about our bingo board is uh, different types of activities. Some kind of low entry activities like joke creation. Who, who doesn't love telling a good joke? Um, to TED Talks. So we curated TED Talks so folks can just kind of consume that. Um, we also have some other ones around like foreign language. How might we use generative AI with foreign language? We honestly didn't really know in August, and it was amazing to see what our folks figured out. Another big piece of this is how it works with our instructional framework, which is kind of the basis of teaching and learning here in St. Brain. And so we wanted to, to slice in these um, kind of high leverage uh, tasks for folks to think about when they're thinking about generative AI. Not all of them are, are super complex, but we wanted to have some of them have some, some thinking. So I'll pause there for a second. Any questions on the bingo board? All right, now we get to the pop-ups. 
Um, probably my all time favorite part of, of what we're doing here in, in Exploration AI. So pop-ups are our monthly uh, in-person meetups at different schools around our district. We knew it was really important to have some in-person um, collaborative dialogue and shared learning um, on our journey with AI this year. Um, but we also know that it's tough to, to get somewhere and you know you got practices and there's dinners and there's things of that nature. So we wanted to spread it out through our whole district. And so what we did is we scheduled um, different events in different areas of our 411 miles <laughs> uh, district. So each that we have a couple schools that are hosting these, um, which has really helped us uh, number one, be visible. When we're there at the schools, you'll see some of our pictures. We got all kinds of snacks. Um, everybody knows we're coming. Folks that maybe did not sign up for a professional development start to kind of hang around and, and then start to engage in these sessions. Um, so let's take a, a little bit closer look at what these pop-ups look like. All right. So here's some tweets here. So top left is our, is this happened just a couple weeks ago and, and right before break but we had our innovation lab um, at our pop-up event and our innovation lab, along with uh, a student run team, they put on a Canva magic, magic AI um, session where Canva was nice enough to do some professional development with us. And then we had our, our, AI, our innovation lab students there to kind of help um, assist. Um, really cool opportunity for folks to see our innovation lab as well as be able to engage in some PD there. Um, the, the next one on the right hand side is just something I'm just incredibly proud of. And I know my, um, our leader of this group would be very proud of this too. So we have an AI student leadership team at our innovation center, and we have partnered with them this year there. I think there is maybe eight of them and they have come to all of our pop-ups and they run a getting started session, uh, at our pop-ups. We have all different types of sessions. Um, some of the sessions are kind of, we always have them. So we always have a getting started. Um, but some of the sessions kind of, we kind of make them up as we go as, as this like incredible stuff is just changing, but going back to, to the getting started. So this, this group, it's just a one-on-one. -on -one. If you've never used generative AI, or you just would love some help, um, our AI leadership student team is there, was there to help. And they've been at every single one. Um, which is pretty awesome. So I'm, I'm just really proud of all them. Um, and it, it's, it's a different feeling when, when we have our student leadership, our, our students uh, being leaders in these situations and able to, to help our staff members kind of start to navigate these waters. Um, I'm going to jump back to, to some different sessions. So like I said, different sessions for different days. Um, and some of the time is just spent hanging out in the library doing the bingo board together having a conversation um, and it, it's just, it, they're really fun. Wouldn't be a professional development in St. Vrain without some yummy snacks. Um, and so again, we call them pop-ups and they're pop-ups for a reason because we have tons of pop themed snacks. We have everything from pop rocks to skinny pop to popcorn um, to, oh man, oh, I'm blanking now. Blow pops, anything that has pop in it, we have. A lot of people just come for the snacks and then they, they stay. Um, but it's always important to have some fun theme stuff. Uh, so that's that. Snacks are key. It keeps the learning going. And then here's another pretty uh, kind of an amazing day uh, for me. So if you look down there, ring pops. Yep, definitely ring pops. On November 14th, we held our last uh, pop-up. And that was at Frederick High School, which was three days before our Thanksgiving break. We honestly had no idea on how many um, folks would show up. And we had 70 plus folks show up three days before Thanksgiving break to engage in this work, but I, which I think just shows the true commitment and like curiosity that our staff has around uh, generative AI and AI. Uh, the tweet on the left is just a cool one. So that's an entire school, not an entire school, but a large uh, contingent of Coal Ridge Middle School. So they came and hung out as a school. And we're starting to see that even more and more as we put on these in-person events, as schools are starting to come in small groups or larger groups, and they can engage together. Um, so just, just really cool. Pop-ups, can't wait for the next one. Our next one will be online. 
um, which will be fun. And then we have a whole slew planned for the spring. That's a great question. So the question is Canva AI and what other Gen AI tools would you want your teachers and students to use? So we are incredibly focused just on what our teachers are using at the moment. So we, we don't necessarily um, kind of brand it by, you know, use chat GPT or use Bard. We, we kind of have had them explore all different types of tools, which is um, a part of the, the Schoology course is we give the whole slew of course of different tools and folks are able to, to kind of pick and choose and make some decisions around which tool is best for them. Um, in terms of like in-house tools, we, uh, we are using Bard with, with our Google um, and, and that's, that's about it. We don't, we're not blocking anything or anything like that. So any of the tools for our teachers are, are available. Students, we're still navigating in terms of service and what all that means um, to have students use uh, generative AI. Great question. I'll kind of pause there for a second. Any other questions? Thanks, Jillian. All right. So we talked about our uh, asynchronous part, which was the bingo board. We talked about the in-person events, which is another arm of this uh, professional development. The last arm of this is our school champion. And this was a, a, a really important part of this professional, this year long professional development. Um, so each one of our schools identified with their principal, um, an AI champion. And these uh, staff members will collaborate with their school's leadership team. Start to think about how to interweave AI strategies into their monthly late start professional. Oh man, I screwed that one up into their monthly late start professional development days. That's a lot. Um, we also have other professional development times. And so the goal of this was to really empower um, one or two people or, or a couple more if needed at each one of our schools to really be all in to, to learning how, how AI and generative AI is going to work in teaching and learning, and then be that partner with our building leaders around how to interweave these AI strategies and exploration into their monthly um, or weekly professional developments. Um, awesome group. We have a call every, every, every month, and we have talked about everything from what might it look like for district-wide AI guidelines, what that might look like, um, into just straight sharing resources. It's a great group for them to, to share those things with. Um, and then sharing of best practices uh, around generative AI. Uh, these school champions also receive extra duty, um, which, which, which is always a nice incentive. Great group of, of educators, and we definitely look forward to, to these calls every month. Uh, no, we have not. The question is, um, has, have we blocked for student use? We have not blocked it um, from, from our from our instances, another good question. All right, um, but Jillian, just we're we're still like I said, we're still trying to navigate what that does look like for students to use. Um, we're very mindful and about terms of service and privacy agreements, and so we're still trying to figure all that out, as as I'm sure uh, lots of you are. So now I want to kind of spend this last little bit, just really dive in deep into different ways our our staff members and educators have uh, explored generative AI to collaborate, to connect, and to create. Some of these examples, uh, some of these examples you may have seen before, but I just think it's so cool to be able to see the discussions that are happening in our Schoology. And so I'm going to talk to any of those. Oh, and speaking of PD, you can request a PD certificate for joining this course. All right. So the first one was to collaborate. Um, what, what we all know, working in schools and working for a school district, we all like um, a, a partner, a collaborator, an instructional coach, but sometimes those, those, those people just aren't around or they, they just, it's just a timing thing. So what we have noticed is our educators are really exploring how to, to use generative AI to collaborate with around lesson design, lesson ideas, um, all types of things. And, and I love this top example here. Um, this first line says, I asked ChatGPT to help me brainstorm ways to engage my students in a virtual classroom. So we also have a, a fully online school, Launch Ed, a great place. Um, and so that's just a, a cool way to, to start to get some ideas around how to engage students in a virtual classroom. And, and like the teacher said, it was nice 
way to brainstorm ideas I otherwise may have not thought of, but then I could build off of. And that's something we we emphasize a lot in this professional development um, is, yeah, it's cool to just get those ideas, and but it's not enough just to copy and paste them and then send them out. Like, how might we put our own spin on it and and make it make it more who we are. Um, this next one, another great one, uh, middle school orchestra teacher. Give me three ways in which I can incorporate more leadership opportunities in my classroom. Um, and not asking for a, a lesson design, not asking for a lesson plan or a unit plan. Collaborating with generative AI to think of different ways that they can incorporate some more leadership opportunities in their classroom. Um, which I just thought was a, a which was a really cool use. The other thing I want to highlight on this one is where was it? Um, this last line here. I teach secondary social studies, and instead of specifics, we can take into account how to make sure we are not breaching those ethical concerns. Um, and since this is in our LMS and it's a discussion, we're able to then go back and have a and and not not me, but other teachers and educators. Well, sometimes me. I try and jump in there quite a bit. Um, but they're able to have that a discourse in an online setting around, man, what what are some of those ethical concerns? They can start to have some thought partners in an online safe space um, around what those what those could be and just kind of be able to talk it out. Um, great place for for um, people to get ideas off of. All right, moving on. Now going back for a collaboration around lesson de design. The 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 brilliance in this one here is I'm a high school teacher which definitely takes some brilliance, but needs three ideas on how to use structured and unstructured interactions among students to promote, to promote active listening, empathy, collaboration, co-creation, conflict resolution, and leadership opportunities in a VEX robotics year-long class. There's a lot of things um, that are really interesting about that prompt. I love that the, our, teach, our teacher was thinking about not just the lesson plan or the year long robotics class, but how might they bring in some of these different uh, durable skills into their classroom. And it may not, you may not use every single one of these things, but then it gave this teacher something to go off of, something to then build on. And we'll go on to the next one here is connect. Uh, the prompt was, what are some phrases and compliments I can learn in Spanish with phonetic guidance to help my newcomers and Spanish speaking students feel more welcome in my classes. Um, just a great way to start to think about how to connect with all of our students. Um, and then it was able to, to push that out. Um, just a cool way to connect straight up. I love the, I love the phonetics. Um, then you're able to, to be able to uh, speak it maybe a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I, I like I like the where the the core of that is coming from is is how may I use this innovative tool AI generative AI to help me connect with with my students in my class. Um, pretty brilliant there. And then moving on to this next one, um, it's another way that our our staff members and educators are thinking about how they're connecting. Um, not with their students, not just with their students in their classroom, but also their families and, and communities and guardians um, at home. So one of the bingo squares is a positive phone call script. And so you can see here, this teacher um, asked for a sample script around, uh, this is a great one, uh, phone calls home of a high school math student that focuses on courage, trying new things and not quitting when it gets hard. Um, a couple really great things to just go off of and like tell the student's guardian or, 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 or parents at home. Um, but sometimes even like me right now, you get on the phone or you get on the call and you start to kind of ramble a little bit. And so it's nice to always have a script. I don't know. Oh, you can't see it. How about that? It's always nice to have a little script to, to go off of, to, to keep you on track. Um, so I love the idea of the positive phone call script. Uh, obviously, we've seen it with emails and newsletters, but um, and also then you can switch the languages. Just really, really cool ways to connect uh, with our families at home and communities. All right, rounding it into create. Another one of my favorite 
favorite ones here. Um, so our, our using generative AI to create new things. And I, and I know that's kind of a, a weird thing to say because generative AI is always creating new things, but new games has is, is been one that we've seen kind of take off here in St. Brain. This is a great one um, from, from one of our high schools. They are designing a treasure hunt game in the library with high school students. Um, so what would the rules, equipment, and scoring look, look like in this game? Describe the unique gameplay experiences and benefits it could offer to teachers and students. And so what a great way to, to kind of create a fun and engaging learning experience um, with a treasure hunt or a breakout room or something like that in, in a high school library. And, and again, the librarian or, or the media specialist maybe isn't taking this directly off and, oh, let's go for it. Um, but just to get that first idea of like, oh, yeah, what if I did make a treasure hunt? Or what if we did create some kind of breakout room inside of this uh, library? And just that alone, that little spark of creativity and kind of spark of collaboration, sometimes all, all, all we need. Um, I'll highlight another really cool one. I don't have a, a screenshot of it, but I'll, we've seen it um, with lots of our PE teachers, especially elementary school. Um, I forgot to say I'm, I'm a former elementary art teacher. And so I, I have, there's a special place in my heart for, for, for that, all that kind of stuff. But our elementary PE teachers, sometimes they're, they come, they come up with these games all the time, no matter what, but what we, what we thought it was cool, they would start to say, um, maybe three or four students, can you go pick out random, random sports equipment that you want to play with? So four kids would come over, each would pick out one different thing. And then using generative AI, the teacher using generative AI would then have it create some games. And then, you know, you got like a hula hoop, a basketball, and I don't know, hockey stick. And, and the kids are really into, uh, they're learning all about frog cycles. So then you create a, a game with your fourth graders using basketballs, hula hoops, and hockey sticks all around a frog life cycle. Um, doesn't take long. You can even bring the kids into that, uh, that learning, but just a really, really cool and way to bring that into um, some different classrooms. Uh, seeing it with art, seeing it with all, all different types of things, but yeah, the elementary PE ones definitely stick out. Um, so yeah, really cool one. Yep, absolutely, Vince. So Vince said, excellent ways for teachers to try a bit if, they apprehens if they're apprehensive about it. Um, and that's just a great point. One of the core things about uh, Exploration AI is for some of our staff members that maybe are just a little apprehensive or, or aren't quite sure, giving them some different entry points into exploring it um, was, was critical in, in this. And then the image creation, man, if you need some time, just kind of go down in, uh, a rabbit hole, no pun intended, and, and have some fun creating some images, you can do that now. Um, the image creation, as a, and again, as a former art teacher and uh, artist, Wait, let me phrase this right. And someone who wants to be an artist when they grow up, the image creation tools are, are amazing. Um, so this is an example we saw for one of our band directors, middle school band directors, just coming up with a logo. And this is where they use Canva AI tools uh, to create a logo for their bands. Super cool and easy way to, to use it. But it just puts that little personalized touch. As the teacher stated, the, they might use it for one of their Schoology courses. Um, course headers or in, incorporate it into their uh, Instagram pages um, or different social media outlets. Personalization and, and, and ways to create really cool and high quality images uh, fairly quickly. Um, awesome. We use in St. Vrain, we use the, Cam the Canva AI tools for this, as well as Adobe Firefly tools. Um, I know there's a million others and, and we probably have folks that are using those, but those are the two that we focus on a lot. Another cool example, which I wish I had some screenshots of it, but I'll just verbally process through it is going back to that idea where uh, this was an awesome idea from one of our elementary art teachers uh, around bringing, bringing the students and, and younger students into this world of generative AI so the 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 group is learning all about Ecuador and and animals and um, different types of folklore and 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 stories that go along with that. So they were creating their own drawing 
like pencil pen um creating their own uh animals and and creatures that may have lived in ecuador and then the teacher thought oh what if we had them what if i had just a couple like write me a prompt and then i would return them and show them what that what that animal could look like and then the kids were all over the place with their prompts some really cool, cool stuff came out and some other ones that they were like oh that doesn't quite look like my um what i prompted which is a great way to start to introduce what prompt engineering and what prompting is um, with our students. I go back uh, to fourth grade, and I still remember this. Um, we were doing essays around right, uh, making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So my teacher said, okay, everyone needs to write down exactly how you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And then I'm going to read these off and make them. And then obviously I take one piece of bread out, put jelly on it, put peanut butter on it, put the other piece of bread on. And then I still remember the day he took a piece of bread out, took the whole can of peanut butter, put the whole can of jelly on it, and then put the other piece of bread on top. And I was like, what? That's what you told me to do. And so that's type of thinking and, and prompting um, at, at a young age of thinking about what that can look like uh, uh, is pretty incredible and really starts to to empower our students to start to think about how might they they use this uh, these technologies in the future, even though they might ha not have their hands on them quite yet. I agree, Jillian. It would have taken me a long time. Even even someone that likes to create these kinds of things, it's the the efficiency and the time spent. Um, we believe that time spent uh, working side by side with our students is the best time well spent. And so, spending lots of time making sure uh, Wildcat is all lined up correctly. Um, we would rather that time being spent making strong connections with our students. All right. And then of course, in and out, we obviously have a lot of fun. So our uh, our joke, our joke square on our bingo board has all kinds of great jokes. And so I, I picked two here. Um, but again, going back to those different entry points, this is one of the the first bingo squares or or tasks we we do with our educators or staff members that have never done it before um, or use generative AI is how might you make a joke for tomorrow's class? You know, what are you learning about or what do you think your kids think is funny right now? And and how can we create a joke to to use that to use in in um, in your class the next day? Um, Oh, yep. Yeah. Thank you, Vince. So um, I'm definitely not going to call out who put these in, uh, but th this was a great one. So why do they call it professional development for teachers? Because internal students with a coffee dependency doesn't quite fit on the name tag. Very funny. May have been done by our uh, director of innovation. <laughs> um, another interesting kind of thing is We've had lots of discussion around these citations, and I and I purposely did leave that one on there today. Um, that's just some conversations we're having. That if if we are going to use these tools, when is it appropriate to be transparent that they're being used? Um, so that's it, a that's another great discussion, probably for for another time here. Um, and then th this last one: a middle school schooler has an overdue library book. I have a middle schooler, and we have definitely paid some library fees. Uh, the title is Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens, The Ultimate Teenage Success Guide. So um, to, just to round this out, keep it fun. Our, our teachers and staff members have had a great time just with the with some of the fun squares on our on our bingo board. But then it, it gives them that confidence and and to really want to be able to kind of maybe lean in and dive in a little bit more. And you know what? If only they made jokes and watched a couple of YouTube videos or anything like that, that's that is a okay. That they, they are engaging in, in the manner in which they need to engage right now, but at least they're starting to lean in just a little bit. So we're excited about all that. And just to kind of close out here, so as, as leaders, our commitment is to empower all of our educators and artificial intelligence is not just forward thinking. This isn't going away, AI, not going anywhere, not next year, not five years, not 10 years. So it's definitely essential that we're preparing our students and educators and then all our communities for a future where AI will be around with ubiquitous and transformative and innovative and whatever kind of buzzword you want to put in there. Um, but it's important for us to, to start to empower our educators and, and how to use this in a safe 
an ethical manner. Um, so together, we'll, we will foster a generation of critical thinkers, problem solvers, and innovators ready to navigate and positively shape the world of tomorrow today. So with that, my name was, is Jason Kelsall, and I get to work for St. Brain Valley Schools. If you'd like to connect with me, I'd be happy to do so. I look forward to, to hearing some of your stories. Um, but with that, I will, I'll totally open it up for any kind of Q&A off mic or anything like that. Thank you, Jason, for a, a series that's called the Adaptability Initiative. That was an incredible example of a district-wide approach to, to adapting to AI, which is, is really inspiring to see. Well, looks like we have a, a question yep. from Michelle. Yeah. What tips would you give to folks for creating great prompts? I was I was wondering also if you had a focus on prompt prompt writing in your in this program. Yeah, and that's that's a great question. I definitely have all those kind of acronyms floating around in my brain um, around how to create good prompts, but when it kind of really boils down to it, I really want to think the the key things for me are thinking about like what do you what do you want out, what do you want generative AI to give you back what is what is going to be your end product who are you so if I if I am a and and a, a big part of that is using some of those um, in OpenAI they have oh I forgot what they're called you can kind of have some of those pre made uh, prompts created with your profile so I'm an educational leader. Uh, technology leader in a one-to-one -one district. So first of all, any prompt that it's going to return is going to know who I am. So the role and what you want and as specific as possible are the three things. Role, specific outcome, and um, who you are. Yep. Role, I know I screwed it up. Yep. Specific outcome and who you are. Yep. Did you have any trouble or pushback getting approval or support from district leadership to move so quickly with this? How did you get people on board? Great question. Yeah, that's a great question. And so thinking back to to November of last year, and even just a little bit before, when when these technologies started to come out, um, I'll be honest, our, our really inspiring and innovative leaders uh, at, at the district level kind of already had an ear to it. And there was some small conversations. And then what I thought was kind of a pivotal, pivotal point in that was... Um, we had large conversations around it. There was large conversations at the cabinet level. Um, there was large conversations at the, the board of ed level. Um, and then with all of those conversations, the leaders in our in, in our district were able to start to, to almost do a little bit of exploration AI themselves with thinking about what, what could this and what will this look like for our school district in the upcoming years. Um, and there's it's it's uh it's conversations of what's next and that's awesome and there's also conversations around going back to to our student conversation of of safe and ethical uses and responsible uses for this so having those conversations starting way back in in November um was was critical and the next part I'd put on that Caitlin that, that's a that's a really good question is to to keep it keep the conversation going I know I've said the word visible probably quite a few times, probably not as much as exploration AI though. But um, when you keep it visible, when we post things in our social media channels, when we have uh, some of our, our student writers or, or intern writers write articles, when we're able to stand up at uh, leadership councils or cabinet or, or different meetings and um, continue the conversation, it, it shows uh, the commitment, not just from from like the Office of Professional Development, DTS, and Office of Curriculum Assessment, but it shows the commitment from all of our educators and staff members in our district that we're we're all in, we're ready to rock and roll, um, but we want to make sure that we're doing it uh, in a in a really uh, well thought out and kind of well designed way. So keep it visible, visible and discussable. Michelle asked, what about getting principals ready to support conversations about AI in their schools? Yeah, that's just another really good one. Um, so I'll kind of go back to our, our school champions. And this is also happening just a lot more with, than our school champions. Um, but it's important to start to practice some of those conversations, um, either on an online setting like we saw in Schoology, 
um, which also I got to say, we have a lot of our principals in, in that school, in those Schoology courses. Um, but to, to kind of almost role play it or, or start to have conversations out loud with their staff, like, okay, what if, a student turns in something that it was obviously created by generative AI. Okay, they have, and they will. So what, what what's the conversation going to look like? Um, and so I think getting getting ahead of it, not not kind of turning turning a blind blind eye to it or or, or anything like that. Um, but think about what what are those conversations um, going to be, and that's that's kind of more on the the management side and and the, that side but i think it's also really important which i mentioned a lot of our leaders are in those courses is for our our school leaders to be able to start to model these things even in small little bits i've had a couple uh cool examples where some of our assistant principals um started using it to to do just their staff emails and anything like that uh and they're very transparent about it but it, oh i never i never knew you were just so funny um, and so little things like that and, and really being that, uh, role model, that instructional leader inside the school, uh, showing different ways to, to take some chances and, and try some of these tools, both of those things. Yeah. Good question, Michelle. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jason. And, and again, this is, this, the the ideas you've shared about how Saint Brain Valley Schools is um, is exploring AI and, and adapting to it is is really a perfect uh, you know match with with the whole goal of this uh, webinar series and and what we're doing at Swivel, which is to help you know, schools and districts adapt to to different challenges that they're facing, and we just you know of course see that AI is one of the fastest moving and, and biggest one of those challenges today. Uh, I want to just draw a quick connection between a couple of the ideas Jason uh, mentioned and and how you know we we can support a similar but our in our our own approach to to learning like what Jason talked about. Uh, Jason, you mind um, giving me the uh, the screen to share for a moment? Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in to to two ideas that I found really fascinating from Jason's presentation, which was the teacher who uh, created some uh, Spanish phrases to, to connect with, with Spanish-speaking students and the, the teacher who generated the, um, the parent phone call script. So those are one of, say, 10 or more ideas that, that Jason shared. Uh, and I want to talk to you about how in uh, Swivel's tool, Reflectivity, you could uh, adapt to AI, build skills related to AI, or, or any other challenge that you're facing uh, in, a, in a social uh, reflective way. So I'm gonna give us a, a, brief, a brief look at, at that now. Um, so here's a quick look of, at what you see inside uh, reflectivity. You can see that each skill that uh, colleagues are building in your, in your school or district, it becomes a, a community. Uh, a visual community of, of educators uh, building that skill and working to adapt together. So again, I wanted to focus in on two examples I I, I liked, um, which I, I described here as AI parent communication and supporting English learners with AI. So if, if my uh, organization is using reflectivity, I'd log in and I'd see what are the most active uh, skills or, or communities um, where teachers are focused on learning and adapting. So let's say the one that I was really interested in exploring was this skill of supporting English learners with, with AI. Um, what does it look like to, to build that skill in a, in a reflective community in, in reflectivity here? So uh, when I click in, I, I get a, a more detailed look at what's happening in this skill community. So I can see which of my colleagues are, are focused on building this skill and then each step of their learning process is uh, is shared. It's a it's an active reflection that then colleagues can encourage right through a little uh, feature we call boosting or through discussing. So here I see in the case of my colleague Catherine, uh, uh, she's interested in supporting English learners with AI. And as a as a next step here, you can see that the the learning uh, 
plan that she's made is to join a learning community. Uh, and then she's she's done that and come back into reflectivity to, to share her results, to reflect. So she said she joined an online group. I had discussions about supporting ELLs with AI. It's a great resource. And then my colleagues, Floyd and Diane, can, can encourage her, give her a boost, and also participate in the discussion. So if I'm just sort of dabbling with this idea, I can join this community. Uh, I can I can fully jump in and start you know sharing and reflecting myself, or I can just you know learn from and with my colleagues by engaging in uh, in discussing and encouraging the learning they're doing to to help me get started, get some motivation, and uh, you know build that energy that I need to to adapt. Whether it's adapting to AI or to any other uh, change that that you're facing in your work. So I uh, just wanted to draw that quick connection between some of the, the great ideas Jason just shared with us and, and how we at, at Swivel are, are supporting a similar theme of, of adapting uh, through reflecting and, and learning together. So if you'd, if you'd like to learn a little more, um, please go uh, visit us at swivel.com slash reflectivity. If you have your phone, you want to open the camera, you can, you can point the, the QR code uh, at that, uh, at the QR code now, and it'll also take you to the same link. Uh, so that's that's what we want to share with you today about um, how Swivel can help you adapt. Um, thank you again so much, Jason, for for uh, your presentation today. Please go connect with Jason on on LinkedIn and and X. Follow what his colleagues are doing. Uh, so you can continue to learn from them. And also the adaptability series will continue next week, Friday, December 8th, a little bit earlier, 1 p.m. Eastern time with Dr. Samantha uh, Fasich as she discusses how AI can empower future teachers. So thank you, Jason, again. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And we will see you next time. Thanks, all. Thanks again for letting us share our story. All right. Thank you so much, Jason. It was a great job. Learned a lot from you. Appreciate it. Yep. See you around. Thank you.